Hey there, Rays fans. It's Race Day. Top 5 with me, Frank Five. Memorial Day weekend, one of the most memorable weekends that we have in America to honor the men and women that have died in the line of duty while serving in our military and protecting this country, allowing us to have our freedom, allowing us to have the privilege to celebrate with our loved ones and our friends. But more importantly, on Memorial Day weekend, it's an important time to sit back and enjoy one of NASCAR's longest nights in stock car racing. The 600-mile marathon well, was flat-out dominated by one of the top teams that is now the winningest team in NASCAR. Let's talk about last night's Coca-Cola 600. Number one, Kyle Larson. Dominant, dominant, dominant performance, leading 300-plus laps in all stages to win the Coca-Cola 600 over Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, William Byron, and Alex Bowman. Kyle Larson, I mean, <laughs> let's just talk about Kyle Larson. I mean, he had a great race the entire day from the beginning of the drop of the green flag at 6 p.m. all the way to the checker flag at 10.30 in the nighttime. He was just flat dominant all day long. He, he was just up front, battling it out with his teammates for the majority of the race. But in the end, he was just the best car. I mean, he won this race by 10 seconds in the final stage coming to the checker flag. That is unbelievable. That just shows you how dominant his race car is. And he was a completely different island compared to everybody else. And him and Cliff Daniels have just been so good together this year. Kyle Larson is having a great bounce back year at NASCAR after the incident, obviously, we ha he had last year. Uh, he won earlier this year at Las Vegas, has been really strong this year, but hadn't been to victory lane since that third race. But the last three weeks, he had finished second. Three weeks in a row. I didn't recognize that until the pre-race show. Kyle Larson has finished second three weeks in a row. That's hard to believe. And the last time that happened to him was in 2017. And the following weekend, he would go on to win the pole at Fontana, and then he won the race. What did he do? He won the pole for qualifying on Saturday, and yesterday, he won the Coca-Cola 600. I mean, this is... Kyle Larson has arguably been the best center car this year, and he put it all together to win his one of his first Crown Jewel events. He's never won a Southern 500. He's never won the Brickyard 400, which is now a road course race. And he's never won the Daytona 500. He still has time to win those races. But to check, box, to check off the Coca-Cola 600 is one of the Crown Jewels you've won. Pretty big accomplishment. So add a boy to Kyle Larson and the whole five team. And that win last night, win number 269 for Rick Hendrick, now has them as the winningest team in NASCAR, surpassing Penny Under Prices, where most of those 200 plus wins came from the King Richard Petty himself and the other come from people such as the late John Andretti, uh, Bobby, the late Bobby Hamilton, and among among others. Pretty big accomplishment for Rick Hendrick. I mean, Richard Petty, he is the king of NASCAR. There's no doubt about that. But right now, Rick Hendrick, the year that they've been having so far, they totally deserve to be the winningest team in NASCAR because of this moment. So, add a boy to Kyle Larson, the five team making it happen. Number two, driver recap for Chase Elliott. Really strong night, all night long for the nine team. The mile and a half program for the nine team this year has been kind of sluggish. I mean, not bad, but certainly not great. But the last couple of times that Elliott's been running at a track on a mile and a half, like last time at Kansas, he ran really well in the top 10 all day long, came away with a top five finish. And uh, last night, the Coke 600, he... At times, he could keep up with Kyle Larson. Matter of fact, Elliott led the race. He was he looked like that when he got on front that maybe he could be somebody to mess with. But when Kyle Larson got back out in front, I mean, he was just way too fast. But Elliott stuck with him, especially on some restarts that we had. And, you know, for quite a while during the green flag runs, uh, he fell back to his laws, I think, six on a restart. And then fought his way all the way up to take the lead. And I felt like he was going to win stage number two. But Kyle Larson got him at the end. So... Yeah, would have loved to get another stage point. But nonetheless, another solid performance of the nine team, of course, off the win last week at Circuit of the Americas. Uh, the LA, I think the nine team has definitely gotten a groove together. Five consecutive weeks of top ten finishes, one of those being a win and two of them being top fives. The other two were uh, top tens. Oh, no, wait. Uh, Dover was also a top five, and the top ten was at Darlington. I thought the nine team has definitely gotten some mo some good mojo going their way, some good momentum. And next week, we're off to a road course where I believe the nine team will be just as dominant again. So buckle up, folks. Uh, Chase Elliott, is, I think, you know, as the summer begins to hit now, Elliott's going to be on a roll and going to be battling for more wins and top fives and top tens, building momentum, and hopefully can keep up the par with Kyle Larson. Number three, Kyle Busch, um, pretty much... 
played the spoiler to an almost Hendrick 1, 2, 3, 4. I mean, we already had a 1, 2, 3, 4 Dover this year. We couldn't have had it last night had Kyle Busch not been in the mix. But Kyle Busch was very fast last night. He wasn't, I mean, he led it a couple laps, but he wasn't up to par with Kyle Larson's speed. He was a top five car regardless. But I mean, those he even admitted on the radio, those Hendrick cars were just bad fast last night. Uh, you know, he was the pretty much the best of the rest as far as drivers not on a team of Hendrick, named Hendrick Motorsport that could actually run with them and run in the top five. Uh, Kyle Busch started from the 20th position, had to work his way all the way up to the front. Um, he stayed there for the majority of the race. Uh, had things gone his way, if we had a late race caution, I think Kyle Busch could have been one of the drivers that would come down pit road, put on four fresh tires and fuel, and try to make a run at it towards the very end. Unfortunately, that never happened. But regardless, the 18 team, definitely, you know, they have some... Have had some relatively good runs as of late, despite the issue they had at Dover. So Kyle Busch, I think, has gotten the mile and a half program together, and he definitely showed it last night competing with all those Hendrick cars. Number four, the other two Hendrick cars that we have to talk about, Alex Bowman and William Byron, um, they ran up front from the majority of the race. Pretty much, I think, the top three from the majority of the night was Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, and William Byron. Byron was up there a lot. He led some laps, got in front of Larson at some point. Then he fell back and settled for a fourth-place run, but still a nice result. Alex Bowman, in the first couple laps of this race, he really wasn't up to par with the rest of the Hendrick cars. He was back in the top 10, top 15, just trying to hang on. But as he gained track position on the two-touch strategy late in stage number two after Kurt Busch's engine blew up, which set up a kind of a short dash to the end of the final, of uh, the second of four stages, um, he put himself up to position with two tires, and as the track began to cool down, I feel like the track came to the 48 car, and they ran better. I mean, they were the lowest of the Hendrick cars, but to still finish in the fifth place, that's very impressive regardless. It shows that you might have been the lowest of the Hendrick cars, but at the same time, you finished in the top five, so that means the entire team in general with four cars are getting the job done. So, out of boy to all the Hendrick cars. And number five, some of the um, other big uh, drivers that kind of flunked last night, you know, it was really surprising. Kevin Harvick was running the top five earlier, but he fell back and he had to pit in the middle of stage three because he had a loose wheel, but luckily was able to stay in the lead lap and hang on for a 10th place finish in the race. Martin Trust Jr., the man who won this race two years ago, really, really didn't. Um, perform up to expectations last night. Ran top 10, then top 12, and then he pitted late in the final stage for a flat tire and finished 29th, nine laps down. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And last year's winner, Brad Kozlowski, finished 11th place. He, he really wasn't that fast. I mean, the Penske cars were just meh. Logano ran the top five at some times during the race in top 10. Then he had to pit late for a flat, uh, flat tire, I believe, or a loose wheel. And had to sell for 17th place. Ryan Blaney kind of struggled. He came away with a top 15 finish. Brad Kozlowski, top 15. Um, really was a struggle for Penske. But a couple other teams that had some really good runs last night. Both the Richard Childress cars finished in the top 10. I tell you what, folks, we, you know, we look at Hendrick Motorsports last night. It was their night. But Retro Children's Racing was quietly in the top 10 the majority of this race. Austin Dillon ran there for the majority of the night. Tyler Reddick, he started a little deep uh, in the top 15, but ran in the top 10 for the second part of this race. Um, he did a really good job last night. I mean, he's really run well the last couple races. The A-team has definitely gotten some luck on their side. And he also ran the Xfinity race the previous day with a top five run in Jordan Anderson's Xfinity team, making their second start of the season, helping that team try to get more starts because they haven't had a lot of qualifying over there and they don't have the owner points to run all the races thus far. Um, Tyler Reddick is definitely, I think, helping RCR as well as Austin Dillon. I think Dillon's become more of a consistent, quiet driver this year that we're not talking about a lot. He's done a great job. And Chris Buescher ended up with a ninth place finish last night. I mean, he's been the band carrying rounds this year. And right now, as the points, if the playoffs started tonight, uh, today, those three guys I mentioned, Busher, Austin Hill, and Tyler Reddick, they'd be in the playoffs right now. They're in the top 16 in points. They're ahead of guys like Matt Benedetto, Kurt Busch, who had an engine issue last night, Ross Chastain, Bubba Wallace, Cole Custer, Chase Briscoe, Daniel Suarez, and Eric Almarola. I mean, the, the Richard Childers organization, I wouldn't necessarily say they're back as far as being a top tier team. They got to win races and show consistency week in and week out. But they're definitely having good, solid finishes each and every single week and moving up and bowing up with the likes of Hendrick and Gibbs and Penske and Stuart Haas through Kevin Harvick. 
uh, very out of board of the Richard Jones cars and out of board of Chris Bush and Roush. And of course, there's been news this week regarding Roush that uh, Brad Keselowski has been offered a part time ownership slash driver position at Roush Fenway Racing next year, possibly driving the sixth car, replacing Ryan Newman, who's also come out and said, I still plan on driving in 2022 next year. Um, we'll, we'll see where this news goes for the rest of the season. In my honest opinion, I still see Keselowski staying in the two car, even though he's on a one-year deal. I still think he signs uh, an extension with Penske. If it has to be just another one-year deal, so be it. If it's a two-year deal, I think, you know, we can kind of finish up his career there because he is getting up there in age, but still running relatively well. So that's some interesting news for regarding those teams. Uh, Bubba Wallace uh, ran up in the top 10, top 15 from the majority of the race, and pretty much that's where he finished. So good result for the 23 team. Daniel Suarez was in the top 10 earlier. Ricky Stanis was in the top 10 earlier. But I want to give a quick shout out running back in the top 20. Corey LaJoy for Spire Motorsports put up a very solid performance. He outrunning the likes of the other three Storehouse cars. The, yeah, the, and that just show, goes to show you that Corey LaJoy can drive a race car. He can even take a subpar team that is kind of running some Hendrick equipment and put it in the top 20 in NASCAR's longest race. That's impressive by Corey LaJoy. Somebody's got to get this guy a top-tier ride. It's only a matter of time, I mean, because he's kind of getting on the age, but he's got the talent for it. Somebody give Corey LaJoy a shot. He could drive a race car, though it's a multi-year deal for Spire trying to help improve that team. I mean, I think he's definitely made the Spire organization through his cars much better than the 77 car has. Um, so that will add a boy to Corey LaJoy. So that is it, wrapping up the longest race of the year. The Coca-Cola is 600, 600 miles. It didn't really feel like a 600-mile race last night because there really weren't a lot of cautions. Um, from a competition standpoint, I felt like that the racing was relatively closer this year because last year was kind of spread out and a lot of people thought it was boring. Kind of a like subpar race. I, last night, I felt like it was a good, well above average Coca-Cola 600. I mean, 2019 was a great Coca-Cola 600 with the races, the lead changes, the side-by-side -side action for not just five laps, but like 10 to 15 consecutive laps. That was a great Coke 600. This year's was was pretty good. Was pretty good. And I think next year when the next gen car comes out, it can make the Coke 600 more exciting for the fans. And probably bring back uh, the kind of crazy one we had in 2005. Relatively crazy one in 07. And in 2011 where Dale Jr. ran out of gas on the last lap. And Kevin Harvick went on to win that race. Also want to quickly talk about the Indianapolis 500 that happened yesterday. No Monaco this year on Memorial Day because it happened the previous week. I mentioned Max Verstappen won that race. Yesterday in the Indianapolis 500, we had 130,000 plus fans attend the Indy 500. And also want to quickly mention that the Coke 600, that was the first race with full capacity limits for the, was, was, the, the restrictions for limited people in there well, was not in effect for the Coke 600. But looking at the grandstand, it looks like it was about maybe 60%, 80%. So not some people probably didn't feel comfortable to go. But a really good crowd for the Coke 600. And the Indy 500, as you know, that place hosts about like 400,000 people. I mean, it said 130 plus, but it really almost looked like 400,000. That was a packed house, a very sunny day, a solid day of racing, a lot of exciting battles all around. And at the end, Spider-Man, Elio Castroneves driving a second part-time car for Meyer Shank Racing, the Honda team, picked up their first win. Elio won his fourth Indy 500, joining a list of elites in IndyCar, winning it four times uh, in the Indy 500. The great AJ Foyt, the great Mick, Rick Mears, and the great Al Unser. Elio has joined some, some pretty important companies, so out of board of the Spider-Man, racing hard all day with Alex Pillow, Pato Award, Simon Pagano came up towards the end and got third away from Award. Uh, a lot of guys ran up front for the majority of the race. Colton Herter, Renus VK, Joseph Newgarden, Ryan Hunter Ray, Takuma Sato, Graham Rahal before he had a scary crash leaving the pits when they didn't get the left rear wheel tight enough. They didn't get the lug tight enough to, you know, keep the wheel on there. And he went around for a spin and turned two really head on into the pack in front of the leaders, but thankfully nobody was hurt. Uh, and thankfully, Ray Hall was okay, but he was disappointed because he put himself in a good position to probably win the race. But thankfully, uh, it was a good uh, Indy 500 this year, and hopefully next year at full, full capacity, we're going to have a blast. So that is it for the Coca-Cola 600 and the Indianapolis 500 recapping those races. And up next, we will be going left and right in wine country in Sonoma, and there will be some fans in attendance for that race. So will Chase Elliott continue his road course dominance, or will Martin Trex Jr., who's been relatively good there the last few years, 
put a challenge to that nine car time will tell so in the meantime subscribe like congrats to kyle larson on winning the coca-cola 600 congrats to spider-man elio kashanevs winning the indianapolis 500 hope everybody had a good memorial day weekend and happy memorial day to you guys i know this is being uploaded late because i was fishing this morning with my dad and um some of his his uh his his buddy and his son that we know that we've known for quite a while uh i'm uploading this thing really late and plus i had to get a shower because i was out fishing and got sea salt and, uh, in my hair and like on my skin and everything so I had to clean up so I hope you all had a good Memorial Day and thank you to all the men and women that have served in our country I can't thank you enough for your service and for all you've done and those that we have lost you will never ever be forgotten happy Memorial Day everybody have a great week